As a, as a car designer, we do always look back in order to successfully project into the future. And it's our duty, actually, to look into our past and our DNA and see what is there and to be authentic and true to our history. But the, the general design layout really relates much more to our guiding principle of form following performance. But there are a couple of accentuating lines on this car that interrupt the very generous surfaces and they are positioned exactly in the same location as a Type 57 SC Atlantic actually has it on the fender creases, front and rear, and also down to the center spine. When you look at an Atlantic and the center spine, the riveted spine, that's an element that we actually took stylistically from that time. But the elements that are here uh, as strong technical design features I think make the car and tell the story of the car much more than looking back in our history and trying to pull something forward. The biggest challenge for us was also the biggest opportunity at the same time. The biggest challenge was the increase in power, performance, driving and aerodynamics. And catering the design process exactly to those higher values and higher margins was also then a chance for us after thinking about it very hard how we can make those improvements in technical development work also as design language and DNA elements and transfer that uh, in 3D onto the car and give the car a better performance but also a very authentic look. The moment that a new technology opens up new possibilities but then the whole car designer market is really wandering in that direction and we have that trend already since 10 years. I'm wondering what does Bugatti have to do then with that existing technology to separate itself, to have a unique face. And for us, this was this ultimate reduction on this 8i face and just those four elements in a black housing. And instantly you will recognize that's the new Bugatti face. And for us, it was an, a possibility to reduce to the max and show those kind of headlines combined with a real realistic air intake to make it actually a technical feature as well. I know it means for a lot of people like this sort of romantic development. Ettore Bugatti's signature was like this, no? The Type 41 Royale had a similar graphic on the side. Even Louis Chiron's signature with the C shape, you could identify with this line. That's, that's all true and that's, that's all nice and romantic and nice to have. But the real meaning is the significance of the technical performance of this line. That's the reason why it is there, because the air intake needed to increase so much compared to, to the Veyron to tailor to the improved power performance of the engine that we needed much more air intake and that line provides that larger air intake stylistically and also technically. If you really have such a super sport car with so many horsepower and so many torque then it's not easy to control this power during driving because with such a, a horsepower and torque level you are, could permanently drive and be in a slippery condition. Uh, for this, we developed a special two-stage turbocharger uh, system that we have a much better control of the power. Each side of the engine to turbocharger, we have uh, one of this is permanently active and the other one is controlled through a flap and an uh, activator on the electrical side. So we can uh, bring all the powertrain, uh, the exhaust energy only to one turbocharger, speed it up much more faster and at the maximum level of the torque at 2000 uh, rpm with 1600 uh, newton meter we can continue uh, up to 3700 rpm then we switch on the second stage and continue with four turbocharger maximum is uh, 6700 rpm and that guarantees us a very linear and proportional power curve that means you have a very good uh, reaction if you go on the throttle. You have permanent the same ratio of power uh, for each degree of the throttle. And it's very easy to control and to drift. And let me say it's only fun.